I kid you not when I say we are in a literal basement. No, like for real, we are actually in a basement. I kid you not, we are in a basement. This might be our whiteboard today. We have our uh, exquisite markers, the top of the line remarks markers. Nope, we upgraded. Look at these whiteboards. Ah, so many whiteboards. All right, so today we have a very interesting problem called the Dutch national flag problem. This is also a notable problem in computer science. This problem is very similar to uh, the quick sort partitioning scheme that we see in the quick sort algorithm. Um, you'll see why shortly. So what is the Dutch national flag problem asking us? Given an array and a pivot index in that array, rearrange the elements of the array so that they fall into three categories and they might not always fall into these three categories well they'll always fall into these three categories but one of the categories might not exist cut the array into an array of elements all before the pivot elements all equal to the pivot and elements all greater than the pivot not the pivot index but the value sitting at the pivot index so let's go through examples so we can clearly see what's going on here so i color coded it green is items less brown is items equal to and red is items greater than um, the uh, value of the pivot index. Here is an example. Here's our example array. The indexes are numbered above or you can just count them out yourself. If we choose three as the pivot index, what value is at index three? Zero. We need to repartition this array around the value zero. So every value less than zero needs to be to the left of it. Every value equal to zero needs to be grouped together. And every value greater than zero needs to be past all of the zeros. So as you can see here, we have all our zeros here. Okay, we have our brown region, great. And then all the ones and twos are to the, to the right, to the right of zero. So this creates a kind of coloring like the Dutch national flag. The Dutch national flag has three colors. So that's kind of where the problem's name comes from. Um, and in this case, we will be missing one of the colors of the flag if our pivot element is the greatest item in the array or it is the least item in the array. This, is, this means that our pivot element is going to be at the edges of the array pushing out one of the colors of the flag. So this zero is on the left of the array, all items greater than it must be to the right of it. So we're only going to have one color and then the rest. So here, l l let's do another example. So let's pick pivot index two. So pivot index two, we have a value of two at pivot index two. So we have a value of two. So we need to repartition our array. So all numbers less than two appear to the left of two. All numbers equal to two stay in, in a one section and all of the numbers that are greater than two are to the right of that middle section here are two valid partitioning schemes that our program could output so for this we see all the zeros and ones are to the left of two because they're less than two and then we have all our twos in one part and then here we have all our zeros and ones again they're in they're in their own region and then we have our twos in their own region so the thing is both of these are valid because we partitioned based on these rules everything less than two is to the left of it we're fine this is a valid partitioning so this is more perfect than this because we have a sorted order here how are we going to do this how can we do this so there's basically three approaches to this problem all of them use basic array, you know, swaps and things. Um, so let's get into the three approaches to this problem. All right, so let's look at the three approaches we have to this problem. The straightforward solution, build three arrays, build three arrays, build a array of items less than the pivot, build an array of items equal to the pivot, build an array of items greater than the pivot. So what is this going to take? This is going to take O of N space because we have N elements and it's going to take, we're gonna to have to do one pass to build the three arrays and then another pass to place all of the elements from the arrays that we built back into A to overwrite A to repartition it. So this means we're going to have O of N space and O of N plus O of N um, time, which is just going to be linear time overall. So that's what we have here. So as you can see, we have, this is our first 
way we could do it, build three arrays, um, and then replace those back into A. What is a better way we could do? We can do this in place and keep our space constant. We don't want to create space that's going to scale with our input. So let's keep space constant for our next two ways of doing it. So the second way we can do it is we can do this with two passes. We can do a forward pass to place the elements less than the pivot and a backwards pass to place elements greater than the pivot. And in our backwards pass, we keep going until we see an item less than the pivot, which means we've we've encroached, we've we've overstepped into what we've already placed at the beginning. We've reached the first color of the flag, which is the, the region that's less than the pivot, and we can stop during our backwards, backwards iteration. So two, two linear time passes, which would add up to a linear time, a linear time runtime, but in the, in, in the less efficient approach for each element. So when I'm here, when I start here, during the forwards pass, for each element, I will look for an element that is less than the pivot and place it here and swap my that myself with that item. So if my pivot value was one, I would look for a value less than one, which is this value. So I just keep advancing. When I'm here, I would scan the whole array for an item that is less than the pivot value. I find zero here, swap these. This is going to be O of N squared in time because for each element, for each of the N elements, we're going to be doing an linear time O of N pass. So n times n, we have n squared, although it's going to be a triangular number of sorts, it's going to still become around like, I don't know, like half n squared, one half n squared, which is still n squared in time. What do we do? How else could we do this? Well, the problem is, why are we going to do a whole pass on the whole array to find the next smallest element to swap ourselves with, when in reality, we can just do our forwards or backwards pass for the forwards pass example, we can just do our forwards pass and just remember where to place the smallest item. So let's walk through what I'm saying right now so it becomes very clear. We're going to use a placement indice to repartition when we're going forward and backwards to keep ourselves linear in time. Let's see what I mean. All right, so now let's walk through it and let's do our forward pass where we place the items less than the pivot. Here's our original array. Here's the array we're gonna be messing around with. Our pivot index is index one and the value at index one is one. So we're going to be pivoting around one. All items less than one will be to the left. All items equal to one will be in, in, in their own little section and all items greater than one will be greater and off to the right. So now we're gonna do our little scan on the array and we're gonna keep a placement index. So our placement index is right here. So we're gonna place right there. We're gonna have our arrow. Let's make that bigger. So this is where we're gonna place in the array. So we're gonna see. We're gonna start at index zero and we're gonna compare items and place them in there if they're less than the pivot. Is zero less than one? Yes. Place it and advance our pivot. Advance our placement. All right, now we're looking here. Is one less than one? No. Is two less than one? No. Is zero less than one? Yes. So we just swapped index one and index three. As you can we see, we swapped these guys and we placed them into here and now we're placing on index two. We're placing on index two now. So now, okay, we just swapped with this. Now we need to look, is two less than one? No. Is one less than one? No. Is one less than one? No. We're finished with our forward pass and what can you see here? All the items less than the pivot are at the beginning of the array. All right, and now let's go backwards. Let's move backwards and place all of the items greater than our pivot index value. Again, we're comparing against pivot index one, which holds the value of one. So now we're gonna place our placement pointer here. So now, is one one greater than one? No. Is one greater than one? No. Is two greater than one? Yes. So we'll swap index four and index six. All right. So then we just swapped index four and index six. And now is one greater than one? No. Is two greater than one? Two is greater than one. Let's do another swap. All right. So we just swapped index two and index five. And now our new placement is at index four. We're gonna place our, next, our greatest item there. And do you see how we're remembering where our placement needs to go instead of doing a scan every time? That's how we took it from O of N squared to linear O of N now. So now we're here it, and, and, and we, just did, we just did a flip here. And now we hit zero. Is zero greater than one? Well, zero is less than the pivot index now. Zero is less than the pivot index. And now we are encroaching on what we already did. We're already 
stepping into the lesser region. This is when our backwards iteration stops. We end our backwards iteration. And now, if you notice, our problem is finished. We have two, we have three sections. And now you can see we have our Dutch national flag. We have the region less than our pivot value or pivot index one value of one. We have our region equal to one and we have a region greater than one. So this is the Dutch national flag interview problem. This is how you approach it. This is how we took it from using a ton of space to doing O of n squared to realizing, wait, we could just use a placement pointer to remember where our placements go and just do our forwards and backwards scan and place items. This is the problem. And if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want more interview questions like this. And I'm going to get out of this basement now.